response of the session yesterday about um, exceptions. I just wanted to show how we do this. Um, we have a slightly different approach. It's, I think it's more lightweight. We're doing this for, I just had a look in the code. I think uh, 2000, 2007 was the first release of uh, a custom function we use here. So just a quick overview why um, error handling and exceptions. Uh, we all know Murphy, what could possibly go wrong? A simple script, find a record, delete the record. Um, if you're not on, this, um, on, the, um, on the right layout, or if uh, the record isn't there, something else will be deleted. Um, errors are expensive, uh, meaning that um, if you find an error in your code during development or design, then it's uh, very cheap um, if a customer stumbles over it and you have to fix and restore the data um, and um, do the error fixing in place, then um, it, it grows uh, during the uh, process. Um, it's, um, it's getting expensive uh, the, later, the later you find it. And uh, quality is essential. We all know the magic triangle of um, quality, cost, and time. And um, if you make, if you achieve quality on a cheap way, then um, that is the best uh, you can achieve. So the goals are um, or have been always um, to find problems during development, to avoid errors uh, in production. Um, um, if errors occur in production, then um, it should help fixing them or finding them. Um, and the whole system or the whole framework, I would call it, um, should be easy to learn, easy to implement, um, not a must, like uh, you have to implement it in all your scripts. Um, it's very simple. Uh, it has to be very simple. Like um, you have two scripts talking to each other and then you implement it in those two scripts and you can you have perfect error handling. And it should be extensible, like um, if, you, um, if you have special needs, if you have special situations, if you have a special uh, requirement for a higher quality level, then um, you should just use it and, and uh, make it adjusted to, to your needs. And uh, one of the most important things uh, is it has to have um, minimal or zero performance overhead, like uh, the CPU costs should be zero. So um like tracing everything and logging everything uh, it, that you have the data in case of an error is a good approach or a nice approach but it comes uh, with a cost so we don't uh, what what we don't do is uh, that we handle transactions and state so restoring um what we saw yesterday, restoring a state and, and uh, rolling things back um, is not the primary goal um, of our exceptions. Um, as a side note, um, it is tightly coupled to a script control, application control, what we saw with um, script parameters and script results. Um, like in object orientating programming, or I think Smalltalk invented it, uh, the message objects talking to each other, sending messages, receiving answers. So if you tell a script like do something and there is an error or an exception doesn't have to be necessarily an error. Um, then the script answered, "Sorry, I couldn't do it," and that's the, uh, and here's the reason why. So um, the um, exception class, as we call um, comp components in uh, our solution, um, consists of two basic functions: is throw and catch. Uh, these are um, custom functions, we will see them in the, in the example, the demo, um, that um, raise an exception and return it to the calling script and the calling script checks for an exception uh, with the catch custom function. And um, that's basically it. And it can be extended to content, like you can throw a plugin error or you can throw, a, you, you can even invent errors like the username, username, um, has mm, wrong characters in it, or you just write a code and then you can ask for that code on the other side, on the calling side, and react to it. Um, 
Yeah, and there is one script. Um, another thing that we do differently is that um, we always end where we started the script. When we have a button and that calls uh, an action control, like we call it, a button handler, then if anything goes wrong, we always end in that first step. We go down the stack and we go up the stack again, um, and then we pass the exception up. So there is no exiting at somewhere in the stack. So it's always going the whole thing uh, up back again. So uh, now watch me fail. Um, we will just open the I think you could guess my password. Um, simple solution. Um, there are some events that are synced to a um, MySQL server for uh, web access. And if I click on the sync button, I get an error. And it says plugin function MBS SQL connect returned. And then the details of that error, access denied for user, and so on. So um, I can. As a user or as an end user, I can say, okay, that didn't work. Um, let's call the developer. Um, if I'm an experienced user, I copy the error first, and then I open uh, an email, and I say, hey, take a look. I just add it in there. So I paste it in. Have a look at your code. There's something going wrong here. And uh, we get the message, and we see this is um, the actual error that was raised. Uh, the details of the error, that's the text. There is, um, it's a plugin error. It's in the file um, F1 system. I can show you. This is the interface. And then we have like components or files for the application for data and so on. Um, and it's distributed over, over many files and or a few files um there was a plugin error and um that's the detail and this is the script where the plug the error was raised it's in system it's an uh wrapper for the uh, sql connection connect function and here are the details um the parameters uh, we also use um as we are doing this for more than 10 years now, uh, JSON wasn't an option. Uh, so we used um, the quote and eval to serialize um, text or uh, parameters. It's, it's, a, it's related as kind of JSON, but uh, it's not actual JSON. We are just rebuilding it right now to, to use JSON parameters. So the parameters are connection string, username, password. The password is masked automatically uh, if the parameter is uh, prefixed with an underscore, so it's not revealed in the error message. And uh, then we have the stack trace. The uh, stack trace um, is um, the call stack um, where um, it starts at the bottom, where there is this uh, little action handler. It's 12 scripts involved. Um, and uh, there's this little action handler that controls um, the button. It says upload, and then it goes all the way up. And here I can see, if I, if I go the way up, uh, there is some uh, problem with the username over the password. So um, I can, not having access to the system, I can follow the, uh, the lead here and can say, okay, this script, uh, was called with a username and password, also this one, also this one, they just pass it through. And uh, this is the first one that hasn't um, the username and password. So I guess that, um, or I know that um, in this script, the username and the password are set and then passed on to the next thing. So this would be my first go-to. But I, so there are basically three um, three scripts that are um, involved, like the one that is triggering the whole thing, uh, the whole thread. Then there is the one where the action, uh, the error occurs. And then there is the one where the action, uh, the error is uh, produced, where um, the false um, things. Uh, one, one thing first, um, I can show you the 
the stack another way. And uh, okay, that system. I just debug log. I activate the debug debug log, and we do this again. And right now we are profiling. We are recording uh, every script call with um, parameters and results. And this is how it looks like. This is the whole call stack. Uh, it's starting in the action control and it goes all the way down to the um, to the plugin wrapper with the connection. And we see that you can see that here is the first time here's the first time where the exception occurs, and then it's handled back all the way up. And um, this is on the top uh, of the stack. There is um, one script that handles like shows me the dialog, or if it's uh, if it's called by a schedule. Uh, during the uh, at night, um, then um, there is no dialogue to be shown. Then it's um, going into the log, and maybe an email is sent that um, an upload failed. So um, the, the reaction or the what what do I do if uh, an exception or an error occurs is um, very context specific. Like um, if if I click on a button, then I um, then there is a user in front of the screen, and you can show him uh, the, the message, the error message. If it's a schedule, then um, you can't do this. Then you have to log it or send an email. And um, another example is if you send, if you try to send an email and it fails because there are um, some funny characters in the, in the email address, then you get a dialog and an error message that uh, sorry, this email address doesn't work. If you do a mass mailing with a thousand emails that you want to send, you don't want to have um, your script uh, like terminating at that one email that fails. Um, you want to go over it. But um, the script where the error occurs is the same. It just says, sorry, I can't work with that message. Um, I'm, I have to pass. And in that script that handles the loop, it says, OK, there was one faulty email, uh, one message. Um, I save that, I log that, and I go on with my loop. So it's um, the handling is always um, in context of um, what you're doing. So um, no system first. Okay. Um, I think I could. Okay. So I just copy the um, the script name, paste it in, and this is the script. And here you can see how we do um, not only error handling. If I call a script, I have my uh, preconditions. Um, in this special case, there are quite a few. Like, um, do we have uh, the plugin installed? Is the plugin the right version that we need? Uh, is it compatible? Uh, are we on a on a platform that um, where we can use this um, and so on? And is um, the the username set and the password and the DB type and so on? And if anything fails, I just uh, go through the uh, parameters. Um, I throw an exception and say uh, parameter empty, and I name the parameter. And I say uh, throw exception um, parameter empty, and I throw this is new Christian. Are you doing this? No. That was a big info. Okay, so um, I just check all the uh, the context, the surroundings. Can I do this? Can I um, make a connect? And then I'm connecting to the database, and then I have an error. I check for the MBS error, and uh, if there is one, I throw another. I throw a plugin error, and um, just pass. The message, the error message from the plugin, and then it goes all the way back up. In between, I can react to that. I can say, "Okay, there was an error," and um, but I continue with my loop, or I can just pass it up. So, what we saw yesterday with um, the restoring state and and handling this error in a special way, we leave that completely to the context. Like every single script that has an, an intention or a job decides for itself how to handle that 
if something goes wrong, we can just read from the exception. We can react to uh, to details, like um, if there is is there a general problem, like um, I can't reach the server, then we can uh, call the whole thing off. Is there is uh, is there an individual problem, like um, an email faulty email address, we can just log it and continue with the loop. So um, it's also communicating. One script communicates with another. And as I say, I can't do it because the, uh, this one message was uh, um, had a problem, and then I can decide to continue. Um, so this is where the error was raised. And then we go to um, interface. And I think I have it. This is the action control. And if I look for update, thank you, MBS, for yeah, upload. Upload. So this is my upload script. Um, I call um, another script and I check for an exception. If an exception occurs, I pass it to my one script uh, that I need. It's my exception handler. Um, and this shows the dialogue, or if I'm not on a client, then um, it locks the whole thing or sends an email or whatever is uh, configured there. And then I exit the script in that point. So that's a thing that I don't have to do, but I do mostly, like um, if an error occurs, like a script is called, um, I check for an exception. And if an exception occurs, I can restore things if I want to, or I can just exit the script at that point and just pass um, the exception upwards. And this is like it's the default is um, exiting the script um, and then passing the exception. And um, there is the third. This is where it actually happens. Um, we call the connect at this point and uh, we pass parameters and the parameters are set with a custom function uh, user setting get and this is user setting which is which contains a username and password for um, uh, an external database and without access to the system just by analyzing um, the report um, or the exception with a um, um, with a stack trace, um, I know already um, where I have to uh, look. It's, it seems to be a faulty um, setting for that specific user. And um, I can address that without debugging locally. Or That's, a, that's one thing um, with um, error handling, that you just don't need the, the debugger so much. We are hardly debugging any um, if, if something goes wrong, we already know where to look and what to change. And we don't have to use the debugger to go to, to, through uh, 12 scripts, plus half of the thing or most of the thing is done on the server. We pass it on the server halfway, and then um, all the connection and, and uploading is done on the server. So if I'm going to the, I'll do that now. I go to my settings, user setting. for my settings and then there will be a async peer web settings and there's the, the wrong password it's root root obviously um it's a dev environment um so it should be okay so interface I just reload my settings and Uh, right, and I do my upload, and everything's fine. So, um, two basic func custom functions. It's throw and catch. Um, minimum is that you have two scripts that are talking to each other, that use, that implement that. That's um, one script throws 
an exception. The other one um, checks the result for um, an exception object and then reacts accordingly. There are a few optional wrappers for specific errors. Like there is an error message that um, makes all, or, or puts the, the details of um, the error in a readable, human readable form. So if, if we don't uh, catch or like, like um, handle it, like um, do something, log it and don't show it to the user. In, in most cases, we just show it to the user because it's not handled. Um, and then we have an error message. And these error messages are um, cumbersome to type. So we just have wrappers that um, have the, the correct type and like the, the plugin error, um, I can show you that. Um, functions. So we have the um, exception throw, and then we have, oops, we have all the, the wrappers like uh, we saw a plug, uh, parameter empty. Um, it uses, it calls the, it calls the throw, but it adds a little text like parameter, parameter name uh, must not be empty. This is a, a good way to call it. And um, I just call this function with a parameter name, and then it makes a nice type and text. And so we have like found set errors, like if, I, um, if I'm, looking for a, I lo I'm looking for an ID and I expect um, that there is one record, like deleting, deleting a record, and I expect there is one and only one, um, I check, the found count, and if it's not one, I send a found count error and put just put in the one, um, and it makes an error message that says um, it was expected to to have one, but um, there are ten or there is zero. So, um, and I think that's basically basically it. Um, if you are interested in looking how this is done or implementing it, um, I set up a GitHub project. It's called um, FT Exceptions. Um, it's already here. There is example code. Um, I can't see the code. It's not blinking. Um, but um, there is more to come. Like I said, we're just rewriting it. Uh, we also want to accommodate the uh, the while function there is heavy recursion in those uh, in those functions, so um, we're putting out a new version. But uh, you can just star it if you like. You can, uh, there are two: the catch and the throw are in here. You can you can take a look at them, and I will add a demo project, a demo file, and things like that in the next days, so you can play around with it. And That is basically it. Questions? Nils, I don't know if you've been watching the chat, but you've been getting many accolades over there with people saying how impressive this is. Yes, it is. I'm not following the chat, but thank you. Um. Niels, uh, do you always have this uh, running or uh, do you have a special debug mode uh, implemented? Um, exceptions and uh, the exception handling and calling the scripts, asking for um, catching those uh, is always running. That's um, a fundamental thing. Um, what I showed you, the, um, the, uh, the profiler, um, I have to close windows. Um, this one, no, it's still recording. This one, um, this is Mm, this has to be activated because there are, um, with every script that is called and uh, when it's finished, there is an, um, an SQL, internal SQL. 
um, insert and update uh, with the details. And um, that adds a bit drag, so it um, comes with a cost. But uh, we can we can activate this. We, we have this. We use this um, in, in development during development. But we can also activate this um, on the client side if a problem occurs. We just I think it's about five to ten percent overhead um, in, in the things. I'm I'm working or we're working on another version right now uh, where we use just uh, HTTP calls to a log server um, which has absolutely no overhead so we can activate logging and uh, collecting the logs um, on a server on premise or um, centrally so um, this is a general overhaul right now but could um, you could you also do this um, put this into the console of uh, oh no it's only mac isn't it because i think christian wrote something uh, he has a function in in uh, in the MBS that puts um, what you want as an error lock uh, into the console of the um, of the Mac and uh, yeah, we we use that yeah we use that also um, but um, this is only um, mm, okay this is that's that's this is a new version the next version which is in the making uh, where you can decide um, where to lock to like uh, in the internal table like here. Or an HTTP source, or the console, or a log file on the desktop. Um, in some situations, um, it is yeah. If you, if you want to watch something, then you just uh, put it into console. If you like, want to um, if you have a, a faulty client, uh, then we just activated it um, as a log file, and then um, it sends the log file. But it just it's just another target or different targets that I can set up. For this, and also with a um, yeah here here you can see the parameters. This is uh, how they are how they are passed, and um, also with the um, I think now I'm um, right now I'm I'm showing um, the passwords, but um, you can also disable that. But you do not show passwords to the users. And yeah, like I said, this um, if I activate this, then um, this it's getting slow. But um, with the with the exceptions, um, it's it's an if, and the the catch function is highly optimized. It's like it, it looks into the um, string of the result if there is um, this uh, exception colon. Um, and if that's not the case, then it returns. I will consider this uh, almost no cost. Um, and if there is an exception, then on the way up, all the stack is uh, collected. So this comes with a cost, um, but it's in the case of an error, so we don't mind. 